Good morning. These are your energy stories for the third week of July 2020. It was a week for adjudicating and clarifying the rules of the energy sandbox, at least from a regulatory perspective, with a specific tension related to the wholesale market's distribution levels of the grid. On the issue of distributed energy storage, the United States Court of Appeal in the District of Columbia ruled last week to deny a, p- a petition from the National Association of Regulatory Commissioners, NARUC, and the American Public Power Association to prevent passage of ERC- FERC 841. That's the ruling that basically tells grid operators that they need to create a level playing field for energy storage resources. In this particular instance, some of those resources are behind the meter, they're aggregated, and those services are sold into wholesale markets. And the question here is, uh, who makes that decision? Is it state level or is it wholesale market with a FERC, you know, federal level adjudication? Here, um, essentially, after that ruling came out, FERC Chairman Neil Chatterjee said in a statement that, quote, 841 will be seen as the single most important act we could take to ensure a smooth transition to a new energy future. NARUC didn't want that taken out of state regulatory hands, uh, and now we do see some tension that will exist. For example, let's say the ISOs call for batteries to do X or Y in the wholesale market, and the distribution company doesn't know those distributed assets are being activated behind the meter somewhere down at the feeder level. That could cause all kinds of problems for the distribution company, and so there's going to have to be more coordination and concerted action between those two entities. This rule sets that tension up quite nicely. So score one for wholesale centralized markets. Also last week, the FERC ruled unanimously Thursday to reject a petition that would have trashed state net metering rules that now allow customers to sell surplus solar into the grid at a retail rate, essentially running the customer meter backwards. A somewhat shadowy group, the New England Ratepayers Association, NERA, um, they don't represent me and I live in New England, argued that net metering was subject to FERC's jurisdiction because all that energy coming in was impacting wholesale markets. And so basically the FERC looked at this thing and said, you know, we're going to skate on this one. They used a procedural argument saying NERA could not show specific controversy or harm and therefore they declined to rule. But some of the commissioners have suggested that FERC should still take this up in the near future. So this may be Monty Python-like and not dead yet and perhaps somewhat lacking in consistency with that federal court ruling, because on the one hand, you have storage that wholesale uh, markets are essentially involved with at the FERC level, and then you have these other distributed assets, often which sit right next to the batteries, that are not subject to the same regulatory regime. So it's going to be really interesting to see, especially when the two resources are combined, what kind of consistency we get in rulings across the space. I don't think we are done yet. The next story, investment management firm BlackRock, with its $7 trillion under management, issued a report last week that it used its shares to take voting action against 53 companies not making enough progress in addressing climate change. 37 of the companies it focused on were energy companies with a combined market cap of $408 billion. Some votes were against board of directors. Others were in favor of, in favor of climate-related proposals. And it also put another 191 companies on watch. Finally, the last story, IHS Market, the analyst company, indicated in a recent report that it sees green hydrogen from renewables being cost competitive with gray hydrogen derived from fossil fuels by the end of this decade. If that's the case, so renewables fall in cost and then the electrolyzers continue to decline in cost, those are the things that separate water into H2O. If that's the case, we may see the hydrogen economy go on a tear within the next decade as this becomes more and more the reality. There are already many projects being announced with 2025, 2030, and some even earlier than that uh, on line dates. Um, This could have impacts across the power grid, transportation, even generation, and then also bringing those clean electrons into the industrial sector as well to clean up uh, use of natural gas and coke and other fuels for steel making, etc. So those are the four stories this week. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy. We'll see you next week.